Hello and welcome. In this lab, we will be performing in-place density of soil using both the sand cone and nuclear density methods. This is used to determine the unit weight of soil as it exists in the field. This test covers standards ASTM D1556 and D2922, also ASHTO T191 and T310. We will need the following items to perform this test. For the sand cone test, we need our sand cone setup, sand cone tools, a container with a lid, 6 inch proctor mold, silica sand, and a balance. For the nuclear density test, we need the nuclear density gauge, a number 4 sieve, drive pin, hammer, and a base plate. First, we will go through the sand cone test. The first thing we need to do is to calibrate the sand and the cone. To do this, we need to simulate the drop the sand will experience in the field so that we can get an accurate in-place density for the sand. We will accomplish this by filling the sand cone up with the silica sand and placing on the cone, weigh the 6 inch proctor mold and base without the sand, then place it on a pan to collect the sand that spills over. Then place the sand cone upside down on the 6 inch mold and open the valve to allow it to fill up the mold. This is simulating sand dropping into the hole in the field. Avoid vibrating the tabletop to avoid any additional consolidation of the sand. Continue to run the sand until you see it stop moving. Close the valve and remove the sand cone. Using a straight edge, level the sand to the top of the proctor mold, being careful not to hit or bump it so the sand does not consolidate. Clean off the base of the proctor mold and get a mold plus sand weight. We know the volume of the mold is 0 0.075 cubic feet so we can get the density of the sand. Next we need to know the weight of the sand that will be in the cone so we can take that away from the sand that is in the hole. We will fill the jar back up and weigh it. Then place the plate for the sand cone test in the pan and place the sand cone on top. We will open the valve and let the sand fill the plate and the cone. Once it stops, we will shut the valve and reweigh the jar and sand to determine the weight of the sand in the cone. Great! So we have calibrated our sand cone and are ready to go dig our hole. To do that, we will need a container with a lid, spoon, paintbrush, and a screwdriver. Also, the sand cone filled back up with sand and weighed with the cone and the sand cone plate. But before we can go out, you need an explanation on how the nuclear density gauge works and the safety concerns. Before we go out in the field, I need to give you a little more information about the nuclear density gauge. First of all, they're controlled by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And so they require us to keep it in a locked room, in a locked box.
and also with a locked source. Because it's controlled by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, they require us to wear dosimeter badges whenever you run these. The dosimeter badge measures the exposure to radiation that you have while you're using the machine. I've ran these machines for a lot of years before I started doing this, and I've never had one of those dosimeter badges come back over background radiation. So the exposure you're going to get is very low. So you shouldn't have to worry about any adverse health issues because of it. Um, if you're stupid enough and you break the end of it off and you put it in your pocket and walk around with it and sleep with it, yes, you're going to get radiation burns. And if you do that, you shouldn't be in the gene pool anyway. So how this works is the radioactive source is sitting right there at the end of that rod. What we do is we turn the machine on and we get out in the field We'll, pop, we'll put a hole in the ground. We put that hole in the ground. We're going to go ahead and insert that rod into that hole and start our test. Now we have the option to run one of three time lengths on that test, either 15 seconds, one minute, or four minutes. 15 seconds is way too fast, and you really don't get enough data out of that to give you an accurate test. Typically, the industry standard is to use a one minute test and that's what we'll be doing when we go out in the field. Four minute test is, I don't know why we use a four minute test, but it's there and if we stare at each other for four minutes you'll know how long four minutes is. So we'll try not to go down that road. So how this is set up is that we, is, before you use one of these you need to have, you need to be licensed to utilize it. And you have to take a test to do that. Um, the certification test is a very easy test to pass, but it gives you all the information you need to know on not necessarily how to run the machine, but more all the safety concerns with this machine so that you're always in compliance with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Because if you were to drop this out of a back of a truck, have a piece of equipment run over it, or somehow else damage this, they will shut down your job site. They'll bring it into the state, the local, and the uh, federal authorities to isolate the source what is here and there's a chance that your company that you work for will either be fined or possibly lose their license. And these gauges are very lucrative and so to have that happen is a big blow to the company. So you always want to make sure if you run one of these that you're taking care of it. The radioactive source for this machine are cesium and anoresium. One of them is to determine, used to determine the density of the material, the other is to determine the moisture content. What happens is at the bottom of this machine is a collection plate. As we extend this rod out into the soil, the rod emits a known decay rate of radioactive particles which hit against this collection plate. The more particles that hit that plate, the less dense it is. The less particles that hit that plate, the more dense it is. So how we accomplish being able to know what the density is, is to compare it against a standard count, which we accomplish by using the standard block. What we'll do is take the machine, place it on top of the block, and make sure we seat it, and start our calibration. Once our calibration is complete, then we'll use that standard count to compare against the counts that we got in the field and that comparison will allow us to get an in-place density and moisture content of our soil. Okay, time to take the nuclear density gauge and sand cone out to the field. The first thing we are going to do is to do our nuclear density test. We will need to calibrate the gauge in the field using the standard block. Once that is done, I will use the base plate to smooth out the test area. If there are any voids on the surface, you can use the number 4 screen to sieve the on-site material to fill them. It is important that we have a smooth surface to get an accurate test. We are then going to position the plate to use our dry pin to make a 6 inch deep hole.
I will remove the pin and the plate, extend the rod on the nuclear gauge to 6 inches and place it in the hole making sure the gauge is seated firmly to the surface. I will start the gauge and run a 1 minute test. When the count is done, we will record the data and remove the gauge. We are ready to run our sand cone test. First we will place the sand cone plate over the area that we ran the nuclear density test to be able to compare the two methods. Making sure we are on a flat surface, we will dig our hole. We want to make sure we do not lose any material when we do this, so we end up with an accurate test. When the hole is 6 inches deep, we will brush the material off the plate back into the hole and get all of the loose material out of the hole. When we are done, we will place the sand cone on top of the plate and run the sand until it stops. Close the valve and remove the sand cone. We will go back to the lab and weigh up our materials. We will get an afterweight on the jar and cone and a weight on the material that was removed from the field. We will then place the soil in the oven to get a moisture content. This will give us all the information we need to get our in-place density results for this test. That concludes this lab. For additional information, please refer to the student lab manual and get help from your TAs.